Hello everyone, I hope everything is going fine till now with the playlist. If you guys have any doubt, you can leave your comments. So in this video, I will be providing you with some more tools from STL. These tools are going to help you to solve a wide variety of questions. In this video, we'll be discussing about map and set. Those who already know what map and set are can simply skip this video and move forward. Others can watch it. And there are a few people who are coding in Python and Java. So in Python, you have something called dictionaries and in Java, you have hash map. You can read about hash map and dictionaries. The concept is going to remain same. Everything is going to remain same. Only the syntax will be different from C++. So we'll be discussing C++. So first of all, let us look at the scenario. We are given a scenario in which we are given some numbers. 1, 6, 2, 7, 3. And we are given some queries. Each query is asking us to find if that number is in this sequence or not. So the first query is 2. So we need to find if 2 is there in this sequence. So the first thing that we can do is we can start iterating from the first place and we can go to each of these place one by one. And as soon as we reach 2, we will be returning true from here that we found the number. Let us say we are given more queries. The second query is to search a number 10. In this case, we will be going till the end and we won't find the number 10 and that is why we will return false if. Let us say we are given a few more queries. The third query asks us to find 7. So we will be returning true and so on. So what is the complexity? What is the time complexity? So I already explained about the time complexity analysis in the previous videos. If you don't know about that, you can watch these videos. So the time complexity is big of n. This is called a linear search. We are going to all of these numbers one by one. So this is called a linear search. So let us say there are n elements. It is going to take big O of n to complete each of these queries. And let us say there are m queries. In total, there are m such queries. So the total complexity will become m multiplied by n. All right. Now, the other way is to sort this given sequence. We can sort this given sequence using any sorting algorithm. And if we use the sort algorithm from the STL, this will sort it in O of n log n. Okay. And after the sort, we can perform a binary search. If you guys don't know what sort is, what binary search is, we will be look looking at it in the further videos. So don't worry about that. As of now, we are going to use something called set to do these queries. So if we insert all these elements into a set, then we will be able to answer these queries in much less time. So first of all, first of all, there are two kind of set. The first is the ordered set. The second is the unordered set. So set are of two type. One is the ordered and second one is unordered. So in the ordered set, all the numbers are stored in an increasing order. In an unordered set, all the numbers uh, can be stored in any random order. There is no specific order. So to search an element in an ordered set, the time complexity is log n. To search an element in an unordered set, the time complexity is big of 1. And similarly, to insert an element into an ordered set, the time complexity is log n. And to insert element one element in unordered set, the time complexity is big of 1. So let us look at the example here. We are given this sequence, this vector, and let me make a set here. So if you make a set of int, this is an ordered set. So this is an ordered set. So we are inserting all these elements. Int i equal to 0, i is smaller than v dot size, i plus plus. I have explained the vectors and all these functions associated with vectors. You can watch the video if you don't know about this. So s dot insert v of i. Okay. So now we inserted all these elements into the set. This one more property of set. We know in mathematics set contains unique elements. So the number two is coming so many times here. It is coming three times. So only one copy of two will be stored in the set. Let us first print the content of the set. So you can print the content of the set using a for each loop for auto a belong to s c out a. This is going to print all the elements inside the set. Let us see. 
first of all we are using an ordered set so all the numbers will automatically be arranged in an ordered way increasing order minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and 5 and all these numbers are unique as we can see there are three three times 2 is coming in the given vector but in the set 2 is occurring only one time so this is to keep in mind now these are the important functions to insert and there's an important function to find an element so basically we can find an element s dot find let us say we want to find 0 so 0 is present so it is going to return us the position of 0 the iterator or we can say the pointer to the position where 0 is stored and if we search something that is not present inside the set let us say 100 it is going to return us the end pointer of the set that is basically equal to s dot end it is going to return us s dot end so we can know this by comparing s dot find 100 is equal to equal to s dot end if it is the case then we can say no the element is not present let us try to run this now it is giving us no because 100 is not present and s dot find is returning s dot end otherwise it is it is going to return something let us say we do this s dot find 0 it will return us the uh, position where 0 is stored so we can dereference it we can simply print the dereferenced x so we can see here it is going to print 0 alright so these are some important functions that you can use on set to insert to find and then s dot and is another such function I have already explained to you the time complexity of inserting element into the set and searching so it is log n if you want to know more about set you can come to this website c++.com and read everything you can know about how sets are implemented you can know about more such things because set is sorted we can also use binary search on set using lower bound and upper bound all these things we will be covering up in future videos as of now I am only introducing you to set and map so that when I am using this in the code it is not new to you so I'm just introducing these structures as of now you can insert you can erase you can clear the entire content of the set you can check the size you can check if set is set is empty or not so there are a lot of things we will be looking at all of these things in the future videos so as of now we are leaving set to this point only similar to set we have something called unordered set everything is going to remain same we just have to in use this unordered word here unordered set so the order won't won't be maintained here basically the numbers which are inserted in the set they can be arranged in any random order so 0 1 minus 2 2 minus 1 3 and 5 there is no order between these elements all the things the functions insert s dot end everything is going to remain same the other thing is because these numbers are not sorted we cannot use binary search for binary search we need the sequence to be sorted so that is why binary search is not present here again you can read about this from c++.com see we can see there is no upper bound lower bound function upper bound lower, or lower bound functions are basically binary search functions you can insert you can erase you can clear you can find the element everything we will be discussing in the future videos now let us move on to the next thing that is map so similar to set maps are also ordered and unordered so basically the best example which I can use to demonstrate the use of map is using uh, using a word so let us say we are given a word a p p l e and C A T. Now this is a word, apple cat. Let us just consider that this is a word. Now in this word, I am asked to find the frequency of each of the alphabet. So basically, I am asked to tell that A is occurring two times, P is occurring two times, L is occurring one time, E is occurring one time, then C is occurring one time and T is also occurring one time let us uh, make it slightly different so let us add C here let us add a C here and a C here so C is occurring three times now C will be occurring three times and T is occurring one time so this is what I have to tell that how many times a particular alphabet is occurring so what can I do for that for this I can use a map alright so how to use a map I will just show you so first of all let us create a vector of care and let me 
insert some characters here uh, why don't we make a string because I haven't introduced a string to you guys I'm just making it a string a string is nothing but a collection of characters string s this I can uh, make a string like this c a apple cat and then what was at the end it was c I think yeah so now I have this string s and I have I'm creating a map map of type care because corresponding to a character I will be storing the frequency so corresponding to a character I will be storing the frequency and frequency is an integer so map of care comma int m now I will be going to each of these uh, characters one by one for int i is equal to 0 i is smaller than s dot size i plus plus and what can do is m of s of i plus plus basically I am incrementing the frequency initially everything is 0 then I am incrementing the frequencies one by one so finally I can print out the content of the map so for auto a belong to map this a is a pair it is a pair of character and integer so if you want to read about pairs you can read it from again c++.com pair is a collection of two data types it is basically a collection of two different data types or maybe two same data types also so here we are having the two data types as care and int so now we are printing it our a is a pair of care and int so in place of auto we can also use this pair of care comma int a belong to m c out a dot first this is used to print the first element of the pair and then we can give a space and print the second element a dot second this is how you print the content of a pair so let me just okay we have to remove this now let me just print the content of the map so a is occurring two times c is occurring three times e1 l1 p two times and t one time so we can see these uh, characters are also sorted a c e l p t these are sorted because we are using a map here so to again to insert something into the map it is going to take log n time we can also find something in the map so to find something in the map again it is going to take log n time we can also use unordered map here if you are not bothered about the sequence so we can use unordered map and don't worry if you are not able to understand everything about map just look at this syntax and this is enough as of now I'm just introducing you to map we will be discussing more things about it in future videos so here we can see if you are using unordered map this sequence is not maintained and that is the only difference there are again a lot of functions associated with maps and unordered maps so we can see there are a lot of functions find count erase insert everything is there so all these things we will be discussing in future videos as of now you can read if you want from this website called c++.com and you can try to code whatever I have done in code blocks so this is the introduction about map pair and set so we will be practicing these maps and sets in the future videos so this is it for the video this was a tiny introduction about maps and sets we will be looking at a variety of questions which could be solved using maps and sets and there we will learn more functions associated with sets and map so we are good to go to the next video now thank you